Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays where once again it's Factorio o'clock and here we start off with the uh, this is my spaceship that flies all the way out to Realm of Shadows in order to pick up the Naquium that's being mined out there and bring it all back to Norvis orbit to be then sort of dealt with and passed on and moved around and processed and so on and so the reason I brought you to this ship today is because I've made a few changes to it the main one um, is here, well no, there's two, two main changes perhaps, the first one is here where I've put in, now we've now got three of these condenser turbines instead of just one and this is because of the way that Factorio um, deals with energy production so as far as the game is concerned both the high temperature turbine generator and the condenser turbines are the same priority because they're both steam produ power producing things so it has three different priorities. The first one, the one it will use first, if it possibly can, is any energy that's produced by from a solar panel, because that is considered to be essentially free, therefore it's a good one to use up first. Then it will use up anything that's produced from steam, so that could be a coal burning power, uh, power plant in vanilla, it could be a, a nuclear power plant in vanilla. In space exploration, it could be one of these thermal power plants, it could be basically anything where you where you're turning hot steam into electricity. Um, and then the third type is, the third tier is, uh, is accumulators, so it will always try and use any power it can from the steam, uh, steam generation before it uses accumulators, because it treats the steam generation as, as base load essentially. And that means if you want to get it to do anything other than that, any sort of funny business such as um, using up the using up your accumulators before before you switch over to your emergency um, steam power you have to put in a, uh, you have to put in some sort of power management system which is typically an accumulator with a switch connected to it with a power switch connected to it oh and the ship has just arrived so it's, it's now unloading that's uh, as expected now putting these in has made the ship and has meant i've had to extend the ship a bit because having three having these in vertically with the pipes above and below means it's slightly bigger than when I just had one of them sideways on in this gap here and that's why you now see a kink in the belt here and this belt coming all the way down here because I had to sort of then retrofit the, the infrastructure here to fit the uh, the new size of the spaceship but okay that's um, that that had to be done so yeah the reason I was telling you about the priority thing is then from each tier of priority it will then take an even amount of power from each each thing and I think it's an even percentage of what that thing is capable of producing so in this case this is capable of producing a gigawatt these are capable of producing um, five five to ten megawatts so there's a me uh, five megawatts actually because the steam comes out of here at 500 degrees C so there's a massive difference in the amount of power that these can produce which end, may end up meaning nearly all of the power comes from this thing <clears throat> and very little comes from these and therefore the steam builds up in this pipe here to an extent that these then are to the, to the point that this pipe is full and this can't get rid of any of the 500 degree steam so this stops working which means you're trying to run just off your, com your condenser turbine which isn't capable of producing enough power so the whole system shuts down and that's why in some of the past episodes you'll, you might have seen the spaceship engines flickering on and off as, as, the, um, as the energy waxed and waned essentially as the as the amount of steam in here went went too much and then and then it, and then it started running again however with three of these in there you're, we're now capable of using the steam up faster than it's coming out of here and that means we've always got plenty of power available we don't run into these sort of the problems we've been seeing beforehand and i don't know how useful this is going to be because we've, we've linked up to the, uh, the the space station's power supply now so Doing that has meant I've had to extend the ship up a bit. The other reason I've had to extend the ship up is because I've put this extra bit of pipe work in down here. And as you can see here, that, that's a pipe that's leading off to the side here with the, uh, th the 5,000 degree steam. And the reason that's there is if we go back to Realm of Shadows, there's now, this, this, is, this is where the spaceship lands. So we've got the loading, um, we can load it up from here. But then we can dump 5,000 degree steam into this pipe, flow it down here into these, um, into these steam tanks. And down here we've got another of the same sort of thing. We've got the high temperature turbine generator and the condenser turbines, and they're taking in the steam, and then they're dumping out um, they're dumping out water, and, and then the system runs around happy, reasonably happily here. There is a mistake here that I realised after I'd set it up, um, and that is that when I put in however many tanks I've got here, we then discover that these this all gets turned into water, but I didn't have anywhere to store that water because these tanks are kept mostly full. 
And so that means that we're producing we we're producing lots and lots of water and we've got nowhere to put it. Which is why there are some ghosts of tanks in here and I need to actually put in some more tanks on this side to take the um, to take the water that comes out of the steam. Now we've got the pump here to prioritise usage of that. So here we've got a, a, a low priority pump uh, or a rather a pump that will only pump if there's less than 8,000 water in there. So we will have a top up from here if we need it, but only if we need it. Whereas this one will pump all the time and will attempt to get rid of any water that's in here into these tanks. So the system, the system will eventually work once we've got enough of a buffer up here to, to, take, to take in all that water. And to be honest, those three tanks aren't going to be remotely enough. I'm going to need to have about this many of them, I think. But this, the way that this is, this is I, I quite like the way this works because we then pump the water around here. It gets, okay, gets, some of it gets used for sulfuric acid, but then it gets put back into the spaceship again as well. So the um, the heat exchanger in the spaceship can then take in the water from the the um, the outpost, boil it into steam, and pass it back out along here. And that means that there's always going to be enough water left in the spaceship for it to fly all the way back to Norvis, which is of course very very important, or Norvis orbit, which is very very important because that's where where it needs to go. But the reason we're doing this is this steam then keeps these systems running and that means that all of the mining drills here and, and everything else we've got here can keep running even, even when the spaceship isn't there. And so when the spaceship arrives there will be four warehouses full of naquium, uh, naquitite sorry, to dump onto the spaceship so it's ready to go very as, as quickly as possible. The other thing we're doing here, and I finally I have now got working, is this astro is this uh, space probe uh, silo probe launch thing here, and this is here to um, to launch basically to launch the space probes out and to get these data cards that you can see along here, and they're being loaded onto the on the spaceship when it arrives and transported away with it, um, and it's also bringing back the. Uh, it's bringing out the, the probes and the and the probe rockets that get put into this in, into here by by the robots in in this in this um, robot port. So the idea is that we'll always we'll always be able to bring out more of the um, more of the probes, more of the rockets into here. They'll be low, they'll be fired off, and then we can use the spaceship that's doing this route anyway to take all of these data cards back. And they stack up quite nicely. Let's see if we can find that um, that spaceship here. It is. Um, yeah, so that then fills up this chest here, which will eventually, once I've put the infrastructure in, then unload the data cards onto a belt that will go down here onto, onto a train. So that's that's something that I haven't quite finished, but will do sooner or later once I start trying to think about the um, uh, the, the the deep space sciences in a bit more a bit more detail. So yes, the first the first thing is is uh, it has been getting power steady power out on the um, in the outpost and also running these and also running uh, re tweaking the spaceship while I was at it in order to run flat out now the the tricky part of this is that this has pushed my spaceship right up to the hull in hull stress integrity um, level and so I've basically I've gone through and I've, I've almost trimmed off every little bit of spare spaceship I can I've blunted the front the nose cone a little bit I've taken out a few lasers a few lasers here and there that's why there's a gap there i think because having occupied spaces takes up slightly causes slightly more stress than yeah as you can see there it if, if i if i had all tiles occupied it'd be it would be a bit more and so an, ex an extra laser would push it over the limit i've also gone in and trimmed off corners like that that's why it's now slightly asymmetrical just to try and make the spaceship that tiny tiny bit smaller now the uh, the nice answer would be to go in and increase the uh, spaceship uh, structural integrity uh, um, allowance. So I'd get an extra 500 from that, which is loads, but that requires deep space science, and I haven't quite got there yet. So I've had to try and just squeeze this spaceship into the um, into into the integrity levels that I've got, and that was that was quite tricky, but. It is working. It is it is flying back and forth now, and, and uh, but it took a lot of messing around with it to get it to get that um, to get that to work. The other thing I've done with the spaceship, as you might see here, is I've got a beam firing at the um, at where the spaceship parks. And the idea is that the spaceship can always just turn up here, and then it'll always be cooked to bring this back up to 10,000 degrees. Now that's happened more than quickly enough um, because we've got more than enough naquitite now. It turns out, so it's just going to sit here for a bit. Um, but that's back up to 10,000 degrees C. It wasn't vital to have this system here. However, I didn't want to risk the spaceship running out of heat and getting stranded in deep space because that would be an enormous faff to, to, uh, to, to fix and to get it back from. And given that it's powering the outpost when it gets out there as well, I thought it was a good idea to make sure that it's always charged up like that. 
So that's pretty much as far as I've got with that, with the Naquitite at the moment. I have also down on Norwis, I, I did a, a minor tweak um, because I noticed I was running out of a lot of the oil based things. I've come in here and I've. I thought. Oh no, not those, not those ones. These ones up here, yes. It's getting through an enormous amount of coal. So I've gone in and put um, Productivity Module 3 in all of these um, oil refineries. So that means we'll get a bit more oil out for the amount of coal that goes in. But it does mean the whole thing runs much more slowly and uses more power. Power isn't a problem because we've got, uh, down here, we've got crazy, crazy amounts of power coming out of the... Um, the heat, the steam, the steam turbines from the um, from the beam thing that's zapping down from from on high. So this is capable of producing all all the power we could ever need, pretty much. And if it ever seems to be running a bit low, then I can just put more of this stuff on the side of it and just get it to run faster and faster. So, so yeah, power is not going to be a problem on Norvis. Um, however, coal is. So yeah, put, I boosted the efficiency on these ones by putting in the productivity, or boosted the productivity by putting in the productivity modules. Um, but that does cut down on the speed it's producing the the, uh, the, the um, gases and oils and things at. However, these ones down here, we don't seem to have as much of a problem with oil supply. So I've left these ones unproductivity moduled. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of oil in these tanks here, so there isn't an issue there. And that means we've got an, we've still got the nice steady stream of plastic coming out, and the plastic has already been productivity moduled. I should probably have gone in and put in efficiency and speed modules in here as well, like I normally do. But it was a bit of putting the modules in was a bit of an afterthought, um, so I haven't done that. Uh, just let's see. Out of curiosity, if I did go in with the the wide area beacons, that's these ones. Yeah, I, I could just put a row of these down the middle and speed the whole thing up. I would then need to put in um, more belts, of course, but that would mean I would get more plastic out, and so that would be a good thing. How are we doing for plastic here? Oh, that said, we've got 90,000 plastic here, so plastic is not currently a problem. We do have more plastic than we know what to do with. Speaking of supplies, I've also come over here, and, and in the um, this is my, my big rocket launch area on, on Norvis, where we're bringing in all kinds of resources by train, and then shipping them all out, all back out, mo in most cases up to, just up to the space station. But some things are taken a bit further as well, because all of these, they, they will launch to um, anywhere that's called copper drop, or anywhere that's called plastic drop. So anywhere in the, anywhere in my base system that requires that particular thing, they will take it off to. Um, I've just noticed that I have two glass launch rockets. Um, glass from Norvis, and, ah yes, oh. No, I just have two rockets doing the same thing. That's a um, <laughs> that's a mistake. I was going to say I'd noticed that there wasn't enough glass being um, brought up to uh, the space station, so I I thought I didn't have a, a, a rocket silo to launch it. But apparently I already did. Um, oh, but this was not launching. Oh, for goodness sake! Right. Okay. So um, let's just say launch on cargo full. So they can both they can both run now. That's fine. Um, it had been it had been turned off, and I hadn't realised. And yeah, that's that's just a bit bit of a stupid, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, as I say, I'd noticed that Norvis orbit had run out of glass. So I came along here, put in this launch pad here to to launch glass off to these off to uh, Norvis orbit, um, without checking to see if I already had one that had just been you know randomly turned off. So what I've done here is before I had. So there is glass being made on quite a lot of the other remote planets. So if we look at um, Kothar, for example, Kothar is a good example. We are over here. We are making the ir iridium um, in large quantities, and one of the, and the side products of that is that we produce a certain amount of stone and sand as well. So we've got sand coming out here. We've got stone coming out here. Um, they're not at the moment because of the systems asleep because we've got enough enough iridium but anyway those are brought over here crushed down and turned into turned into glass which is loaded into a rocket and then sent off to somewhere that needs glass now i've had to um the original plan was that these would produce all of the glass i could possibly need because there's there's quite a few different places producing glass like this and that would ship it off to to norvis orbit to to norvis to, to basically to anywhere that required the glass however um, no, not here. However, if we look back at Norvis, the problem we ran into um, was that sometimes if those systems weren't running quite fast enough, we need the glass production on Norvis to take up the slack. So we've got quite a lot of glass being produced down here when necessary. Um, and it is apparently necessary. So we're turning this stone here, we're, we're crushing it, and then we're cooking it into, cooking it into glass down here. Um, and that's partly acting as a sink on my stone supply, but it's also producing the glass that I <coughs> that I need all around the um, all around the facilities. So that's that's meant to be a top up. So this is probably 
Um, this is unprioritized. Hopefully the one up here. So what we're doing is we're bringing all of the glass in from elsewhere in the system to here. And then this station should be prioritized. It is. There we go. 10,000 in the year with the star next to it there. So we'll, we will, by preference, use the glass from here. But if there's none there, then it'll be brought up from down here and supplied to, to wherever it's needed. And that is, that's ticking over quite nicely. We're producing, uh, as you can see by, by that train, that train's picked some up and it's taking it off to, to wherever it's needed. Probably for uh, low density structures or something like that. So the, the downside of this, the, the upside of this whole system is we have a central place for, for dealing with glass on Norvis where it can be topped up <clears throat> and we can set the priorities as necessary in order to make sure that, that it all flows through in the, right, in the right way and we don't end up with any backlogs. The downside is that it means we're, we're getting an extra launch in from down here. So instead of the, spe instead of the rockets going straight from, um, for example, Kothar to Norvis orbit to drop the glass off, they're going from Kothar to Norvis and then from Norvis to Norvis orbit. And that means we're getting through a few more rocket parts, um, which isn't the end of the world because we have a lot of those. And I've managed to get rocket reusability to... Um, 68 okay so so about two-thirds of the rockets rocket parts we um we use are, are returned and, we, and can be reused so that's that's okay i guess we have we have a lot of um we have a lot of rocket parts i'm making them in far greater quantities than they're really needed over here so there's yeah there's loads of them we've got piles and piles and piles and piles and millions of rocket parts over here and we're just gradually churning through them so eventually we'll maybe get through all those maybe we won't but the other thing it uses up is fuel and that's put but that's produced from this plant down here which is taking in large again large quantities of oil turning it into rocket fuel uh, which is then turned into liquid rocket fuel and we're putting it into the tanks down here so they can they can then load up the um the spaceships and that, yeah, that, that's working. I mean, it's okay. It's a bit of a waste of oil and a little bit of a waste of rocket parts. But we've got enough of those that I think actually just making the logistics work is probably worthwhile. It's the sort of the hub and spoke system like um, like American air airliners use, where they uh, where they fly everyone to a central airport and then fly from that big airport to another big airport and then fly out from there to the small airports around it. Um, we don't really do that in Europe. We tend to do the point to point thing. But it, it, in this case, because I don't care how long it takes really for the resources to get somewhere, as long as there's always enough there, it's it's fine. I've also put in an additional Vulcanite launch platform here because I need to get Vulcanite being transported around. And so what we've got for Vulcanite is on Miokin, there is a, a lovely system that's producing massive quantities of Vulcanite, loading it into a spaceship here like this. We're also bringing water up for, as necessary for the um, for the power generation. This is all working great. We're bringing, we're then picking up, so, so we're picking up the Vulcanite here that's been processed. We're taking it back to Norvis. That's being unloaded down here somewhere, uh, here. There's another one of these spaceships here unloading. That's good. I've got I've got two of them. No wonder I've got plenty of Vulcanite available. That unloads, dumps into a station here. Uh, we've got we're a bit short. We are a bit short of Vulcanite though. We getting, seem to be getting through quite a lot of it. Um, so it's then picked up from here by trains that can then take it over to over to here for smelting, uh, where we're running out. Lovely. Or over to here where it can be put into a rocket to be taken up into space. And this means it's distributed to wherever it goes. I used to have rockets being launched from Ganymede specifically to places where it was needed. So there was one, they would land here, they would land in orbit. But the problem I've run into with that is that Gany Ganymede is Ganymede is a problem. I've, I've moaned about it quite a lot, so I won't do it too much again. But the problem is Ganymede is in a is 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 in orbit around Staterius. Which is, if I look at the interstellar, interstellar map, is, is over here. It's almost as far away as, in fact, it's even further away than Realm of Shadows. So sending rockets this entire distance is a massive pain in the wasp name. It takes forever for them to get there. It takes no, sorry, it doesn't. No, it takes it takes loads of fuel for them to get there. And if I switched over to spaceships, it would take half an hour for them to do for them to do the flight the flight one way. So it's just not practical to be getting things from here. I don't think. So I've. Um, I've switched over to I switched over to getting all of my um, vulcanite from from Miokin now, and that's a lot more effective. But it does mean that I then need to launch it. It then all comes to Norvis in the spaceships, as we as we just discussed, like this. Um, and then and then we then need to launch it by rocket or by something at least. And I'm, and I'm still using rockets for this back up into Norvis orbit for it to be used up there. But those are now working. That is, it's great. It's, 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 it's all fixed. It does work um, with this with this infrastructure. It just took a bit of sort of rearranging and moving things around a bit. 
The other thing I've done is a little bit more work on Tulip, where, let's use the map view, so it's quicker to scroll around. Over here, I've put in, I've now swapped out the nuclear power plant that was over here for a beam receiver, a high temperature heat exchanger and a high temperature turbine generator. Uh, and this is, as you can see, it's far more compact than the, uh, the, the um, previous system came down to about here. It was basically taking up all of this space around here. Um, and that was using, that was a nuclear power, two nuclear power plants in my standard two by two uh, quad reactor thing. Um, so there are two reasons I've done that. I mean, no, no, there's one reason I've done this. And that's because I wanted to save all of the um, massive quantities of uranium that I was using up in order to keep that th this area powered because I'm really quite short of uranium. And that is a problem that I'm going to need to solve at some point in the future. Um, so I've switched over to the beam power, which is, once you've got it set up, it's free. Um, you need to go out and set up all of the solar panels and the emitters in Norbis or in, in Kalida's orbit, sure. But once you've got it set up, it's free, so it's it's um, it's very, very easy. And this will look like a very, very familiar um, design to you. It's, the, it's the, basically the same one I'm using on the spaceship, um, although slightly more expanded because there's no need to cram it into quite a smaller space and the same one I'm using out in, in the uh, deep space uh, we've got the we've got the uh, condenser turbine sending it back into water and the water can go back in and then we've got a, a uh, pump linked to the um, linked to the uh, tanks here that will only pump when there's a, a small amount of when, when it's starting to run out of water so I don't have to use condensing turbines here I could use normal turbines and it would produce a tiny tiny amount more power for the beam that's coming in um, but then I might then I'd probably need to have more pumps pumping water in I suspect I'm not I'm not quite sure what the what the throughput of these things is um, potentially 500 water per second I don't I'm not I'm not sure um, I could probably I probably actually know it probably would work off a single pump but I've I've, I've used these just because it seemed it seemed easier at the time so that is now more than capable of powering the entire system down here. It's, it's keeping things running over quite happily. Uh, we've got this here. Why is... Oh dear, this has stopped for some reason. Oh, good. The stone and sand outputs have backed up because... Because I've had a meteor, meteorite strike and it's broken a belt. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, if, if I try and replace it with these, will this work? Do I have any of these? Is this in a RoboPort area? It is in a RoboPort area. Did I leave any? Did I leave any space belts around here? Probably not. Um, tulip, 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 tulip. No, no, we don't have any space belts. Um, now I would ideally. Ah, okay. If I come in here, if I pull up one, two, three, four, five blue belts from there, and then try and put them in over here. That should work. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. So that's gonna that's gonna fix that. It, it in the short term, it's a bit just upsetting that that's happened because there should be um, meteorite defences here. So there shouldn't be any meteorite strikes on this planet. Um, so that sort of thing shouldn't happen. And it's especially worrying because this is a Vitamelange planet. So if I ever get round to upgrading my um, version of space exploration that means if this sort of thing happens it could end up leading, leaving some biters on this planet and that would be very bad we really don't want that to happen um so is are my are my guns yeah i mean these are working fine it's obviously just that six isn't enough of them so i need to go uh like this um put this in down here and link this across like this i mean i don't have any of these things here so it's, this isn't going to actually get built but it's a sort of a, 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 a reminder that i need to go out and put more of the more um meteorite uh, what's named guns in, in around to uh, meteorite defense cannons in around just to, to sort, of sort this thing out okay so that's that um that's why that's failed so now we see the, the this is all started flowing and I, I actually don't need um blue belts in here Ooh, there we go the ship is filled up so it's ready to go off again i don't need blue belts in here that's massive overkill but eh it'll do who cares um i could i could use i could use yellow belt in there but i've got the parts so might as well just leave it on leave it on blue right so that's um that's how this is this is this is coming along i think that is that everything let's check my to-do list my to-do list oh yes that's nearly everything there's one more thing i need to talk about and it's a little bit embarrassing so i'm going to uh <laughs> so it's a little bit unfortunate and generally tragic and oops so yeah so i was um in my last stream i was messing around going back and forth between um 
Realm of Shadows and Norvis Orbit quite a bit. I had a, had a few issues here and there with um, various problems, such as the the main one was the um, was was my Naquatite uh, ship running out of power um, because of the the problem with the um, not having enough of the uh, turbines, the condenser turbines on it, as I was talking about earlier. And so when it ran out of power, it would still be moving at high speed, but the shields would go down, and and, or, and the lasers would stop working, and it would hit rocks, and then it would get holes bashed in the front of it. So I, so I ended up having to fly out and repair it quite a few times. Eventually rebuilt it so it would stop having those problems. But I flew back and forth so many times that my, my personal ship, the, which I've renamed the Donut because it's like a bagel, but sweeter, um, is now having uh, now actually I used up all of the ion stream I had in these tanks, so I managed to use up all 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 of that, and the ship is now it's not quite drifting in space because it is cap still capable of moving. As you can see here, it is moving at a speed of 0.37 when it normally moves at a speed of like about 200 or so. Um, so it's taking a very very long time to get anywhere. So what I've done is I've told it to go to the nearest possible place, which is Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2, but it's still going to take another hour to get there. As you can see on the map, it's got to fly from here to here, and that's going to take it an hour because it's going so, so slowly. Um, so when this, when I realised this had run out of fuel and that's why it had stopped, um, well, the first thing I did was was send get my transport ship to come out to pick me up so I could go back and carry on doing other useful things while this crept along at approximately no miles an hour. Um, but then I had a good think about ways to, um, to get it going again. Now, my first thought was to fly in with the transport ship, park next to it, and just pump some um, ion stream from one ship straight into the other one. Easy. I get, get some more ion stream in these tanks. I wouldn't need that much to get back. I mean, a sort of a couple of thousand would be plenty. And then this ship would be able to start flying again. The problem with that is you can't actually do that. You can't park one ship next to another one um, in the way you can you can dock a ship wherever you want on a planet. You can only dock a ship um, near to the thing and then do do what the game calls boarding, where you get out of one ship and you're you're teleported from the um, from the the area that one ship is in to the area that the other ship is in, but they're not in the same area, so you can't actually link anything up between them. So that idea wouldn't work. So the, the second idea I came up with was to, to do that with a load of um, the stuff for making ion stream in my inventory. So I'd need to have a particle accelerator, no, two particle accelerators probably, one to make the, um, well, let's have a look. <clears throat> I'd need to make ion stream, which is this one. So I'd need I'd need a particle accelerator to make the ion stream and some copper, and then I need some plasma stream, which would mean I'd either have to bring it out in plasma canisters, which I didn't really want to make, or I need to bring out stone and chemical gel um, in order to make it in a plasma generator. So I need to bring that out as well. And would I need anything? To make? Oh, yeah, and, and I'd have to bring the chemical gel out in in barrels, I suppose. So that'd be a bit of a that would also be a bit of a pain. But I suppose one barrel makes a hundred plasma. Is a barrel 10 or a oops um, is a barrel 10 or a hundred a barrel is 50 okay so one barrel would allow me to make 500 plasma stream and 500 plasma stream would allow me to make 500 ion stream so I'd only need a couple of barrel maybe three or four barrels just to be sure so I bring out the plasma generator and the and the particle accelerator and I'd sort of build up some extra spaceship floor or some space scaffolding here and just build it onto the side of this spaceship generate enough of that because I've got loads of power here this is up at 9700 degrees there's loads of power so I could do that quite happily off the side of it and then just pump it through into here but that seemed like it, it to be honest that is that would be a bit of a faff it'd be manageable but it would be a bit of a faff so I've decided what I'm going to do instead is just fly it to um uh, to what do you call it? To, to the nearest asteroid belt, park there, and then I can then I can do Plan A, which is to bring out the other transport ship, park next to it, and just pump some across. The other, um, yeah, but at least I've got it back into into the Kalidas system now. So I think when it broke down, it was actually outside the system, and it's spent an hour or so flying so far and got back into about here. Um, having thought about it a bit more, actually, I think Plan B might have been the better one because um, it'd be a bit quicker and a bit nicer just to drop in and. Set up, set up a particle accelerator, a, a no, a machine to empty the barrels, a, a plasma generator, and a particle accelerator. Just hand feed them the stuff, and that would have produced the plasma, the ion stream, pretty quickly. So, yeah, I, I don't know. There, there are there are many ways to uh, fi to fix a problem because this is Factorio. There's always lots of ways. But yeah, I need to start wor thinking a bit more, worrying a bit more, keeping a bit more of an eye on the amount of fuel I've got in my spaceships rather than just letting them run out because that's embarrassing and, and a bit unfortunate. <laughs> So, now that I've told you about that um, 
uh, screw up there. Well, I suppose that's 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 that is everything I have for you for now. So um, don't forget to come back um, next Friday for another one of these videos. Come along on Tuesday if you want. Um, I'm, I'm streaming the um, Factorio Space Exploration on Twitch. That's um, twitch.tv slash Lawrence Streams. Not Lawrence Plays. Someone's already got that, so I've gone for Lawrence Streams instead. But there's a link on my YouTube channel to it anyway. So yeah, please come along and watch me on there. Um, I'd, I'd enjoy having people to chat with while, I, while I'm playing. And you can and you can laugh at me when I do dumb things like this or, when, or point out the obvious mistakes I'm making. <laughs> I'm also, I've also just started streaming um, uh, Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles on, um, on Thursdays as well. Um, that's, that's, that's a sort of a group playthrough with some friends. It was a bit chaotic in the first stream because none of us knew it well. Lots of us didn't know what we were doing, but there were lots of quests and they were getting filled really, really quickly. We're thinking that in the next sort of couple of streams it's probably going to calm down a little bit. But um, yeah, if you're, if you're at all interested in Minecraft and um, me messing around with some friends, then uh, come along to that and let me know what you think. Um, we're playing around with some with some funny stuff so we get can get all, all of us on the same stream, which I think is think is quite nice. Um, I, I would appreciate some opinions from other people on that though. See, so let's see how that goes. And of course, there's still the GTA videos every Sunday and the uh, real life videos every other Saturday. So plenty going on on the channel. And uh, as I say, I'm trying to expand out into Twitch, so please come and watch me there if you can. It's great to have more people, as many people as possible watching. So, that's everything we have for you, for you today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.